I guess that was the bullets whizzing yeah. by. You know, I heard my mother moaning and my grandfather is like sitting in the dining room bleeding, there was blood all over the floor. From witnessing the near death of his mother and grandfather. Because mm -hmm. you went through a terrible time with cancer, mm -hmm. bone cancer. Yeah. How did that affect the marriage? It actually made the marriage stronger. To standing by the love of his life, to being diagnosed with cancer. The person they are accused of murdering is Jam Master J. He is the prolific hip hop DJ associated with the group Run DMC. And having to live through the death of his mentor, LL Cool J has gone through a series of tragic occurrences that could have broken him, but he went through it all and came out strong. Join us as we unpack the untold truth behind the tragic fate of LL Cool J. Tragic occurrences in his early years. He was already LL. Yeah, he was LL. Cool J. He was LL. He was ladies love Cool J. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Most people who have heard the name LL Cool J don't know it stands for ladies love Cool James or that his real name is James Todd Smith. Born in 1968, LL Cool J is a rap icon who helped redefine the genre in the 1980s. One of the earliest rappers to find mainstream success alongside acts like Run DMC and the Beastie Boys, LL Cool J's influence extends far beyond music. The face of LL Cool J we see today might surprise some who only know him for his musical dominance. This success, however, wasn't handed to him. Fueled by a strong will and a desire to overcome personal challenges, LL Cool J took control of his destiny, paving the way for the multifaceted career that transcended the boundaries of hip-hop we see today. While details surrounding LL Cool J's childhood remained somewhat private, glimpses emerged through interviews and his 1998 memoir, I Make My Own Rules. Born James Todd Smith, his early years were marked by a complex family dynamic. Sources like the Chicago Tribune suggest a middle-class Catholic upbringing in Queens, New York. And I hear, I just heard the, I guess that was the bullets whizzing yeah. by, you know? I heard my mother moaning and my grandfather is like sitting in the dining room bleeding, there was blood all over the floor. And it's still very vivid in my mind. However, other accounts hint at a more challenging reality. LL Cool J's childhood wasn't paved with gold. Growing up, violence and drugs were a harsh reality. At the tender age of four, he witnessed a horrific event that would leave a lasting impact. His father, James Nunya, in a fit of rage over his mother, Andrea Smith, leaving the marriage, opened fire. Bullets tore through the home, striking both Smith and LL's grandfather, Eugene. Griffith. Smith was shot in the back while Griffith was hit in the stomach. As detailed in his 1998 memoir, I Make My Own Rules, this traumatic experience would shape LL's life and fuel his determination to forge a different path. LL's words painted a nightmarish scene. The kitchen, a place usually associated with warmth and nourishment, was transformed into a tableau of violence. Blood, a deep, sickening red, stained every surface, a chilling reminder of the trauma that had unfolded. Bullet holes like gaping wounds marred the walls and even the refrigerator, a symbol of normalcy Shattered. The image was raw and unforgettable, evidence of the horror LL had witnessed. Despite the harrowing experience, both LL's mother and grandfather miraculously survived the shooting. The aftermath, however, was undeniably challenging. As LL recounted in Oprah's next chapter, the family struggled for a period, but through an extraordinary act of forgiveness, both he and his mother found a way to pardon Nunya. Remarkably, his father eventually re-entered their lives, seeking reconciliation and even offering guidance during LL's budding music career. LL reflected that his father made a terrible mistake, but admitted that he also did a lot of positive things. LL said he learned to offer the mercy he would hope to receive himself. LL Cool J's childhood wasn't just marked by the earlier violence he witnessed. His memoir details another harrowing experience, a nearly decade-long period living with his mother's boyfriend, a man L calls Roscoe. According to LL's account, Roscoe was a drug addict who openly used drugs around him, creating a constant atmosphere of fear and insecurity. In his own words, L described living with Roscoe as sleeping in a cemetery with a dragon, a powerful metaphor that speaks volumes about the depth of his fear and helplessness. This extended period of abuse undoubtedly had a profound impact on the young LL Cool J, but the abuse went far beyond mere fear. In a raw interview with Oprah, LL revealed the horrific reality. Roscoe would force him to strip naked and then beat him with objects like vacuum cleaner pipes and extension cords. To cope, LL described retreating into his imagination, a coping mechanism he built to survive this prolonged nightmare. This mental escape served as a lifeline, transporting him to a world where everything was great and his dreams thrived.
survive. However, the trauma left its mark. As LL confided to the Chicago Tribune in 1997, the abuse fueled aggression in him, turning him into a bully at school who resorted to carrying weapons like knives and guns. The publication of LL Cool J's memoir sparked controversy. A man named Gaston Roscoe Granger, claiming to be the Roscoe depicted in the book, vehemently denied the abuse allegations. Granger, interviewed by the Daily Press, admitted to occasional marijuana use, but refuted ever smoking in front of LL. He flatly rejected all accusations of physical violence. It's a little devastating to know that, you know, that guy that raised me, that was so kind to me, wasn't my blood. LL Cool J's life story took an unexpected turn on PBS Finding Your Roots. The show revealed a surprising truth about his family history. Learning that his mother, Andrea, was adopted, LL embarked on a journey to discover his biological lineage. Cameras documented the moment experts on the show uncovered Andrea's original birth certificate, revealing a blank space where her biological parents' names should have been. Undeterred, they scoured the New York City birth index, ultimately identifying Andrea's birth name as as Andra Jolly. Though this revelation came as a shock, LL maintained that his love and respect for the grandparents who raised him remained unwavering. This newfound knowledge didn't diminish his love for the family who raised him. In fact, it deepened his respect. LL declared, his voice thick with emotion, that he had more love and respect for them than he ever did. This unexpected discovery not only shed light on his ancestry, but also highlighted the unwavering bond he shared with the grandparents who shaped his life. LL Cool J's journey on PBS Finding Your Roots went beyond uncovering his biological origin. It led him to a whole new branch of his family tree. The show's emotional climax involved not just learning his mother, Andrea, was adopted, but also meeting previously unknown relatives. Cameras documented heartwarming encounters with newfound aunts and cousins, filled with excited introductions and shared laughter. One such encounter brought a smile to LL's face when his newfound aunt, Claudia Lewis, revealed herself as a devoted NCIS Los Angeles fan, faithfully tuning in every Monday. The exploration didn't stop there. Home videos unearthed a surprising family connection to box boxing legend John Henry Lewis, LL's great uncle. Witnessing his great uncle's talent on screen was a genuine moment of awe for LL, who commented on Lewis's impressive boxing skills. His career also got hit with some of these tragic occurrences. Let's examine them next tragic occurrences in his career, LL Cool J's scorching single I Need a Beat, and the electrifying album Radio Shattered Barriers, propelling him to mainstream success alongside fellow hip-hop pioneers like Curtis Blow and Run DMC. This critical and commercial acclaim opened doors to larger venues, landing LL Cool J a coveted opening slot on Run DMC's legendary Raising Hell tour that ran from 1986 to 1987. His electrifying stage presence and undeniable charisma cemented his place as a trailblazer, redefining hip-hop's reach and influence. The tragic death of L Cool J's close friend and fellow hip-hop icon, Jam Master J of Run DMC, sent shockwaves through the music industry in 2002. His death left LL Cool J to grapple with the loss of a friend and a pivotal figure in his career. Jam Master J was shot and killed at his Queen studio, and the circumstances surrounding the incident remained shrouded in mystery. Whispers of a botched drug deal circulated among witnesses, but the case went cold for nearly two decades. Finally, in 2020, a glimmer of hope emerged when authorities apprehended two suspects, reigniting the quest for justice for Jam Master J. In response to the revelation, LL expressed to Rolling Stone that Jay's death brings forth thoughts he preferred not to discuss publicly, so he was relieved that the legal proceedings unfolded when they did. He refrained from elaborating further, but he said given the choice, he'll take 18 years over none, and that having 18 is superior to having nothing. Reflecting on his teenage years touring with Run DMC, LL remarked that the band took him under their wing, illustrating the profound impact they had on his early career and personal development. Reflecting on his younger days touring with Run DMC, LL Cool J painted a vivid picture of his bond with Jam Master J. He shared that J wasn't just a collaborator, he was a guy LL looked up to a big brother figure. He said they had their arguments, but they were always fueled by a shared passion for music. He elaborated that they pushed each other and challenged each other, all in a way that made them both better. This heartfelt description laid out the depth of their friendship, a complex interaction woven with admiration, respect, and a healthy dose of friendly competition. Remember how LL Cool J said he forgave his dad for almost killing his mom and grandfather? It seems things didn't work out that well. Following their reconciliation, LL Cool J's father, James Nunez, assumed the role of his son's manager. Initially, the rapper believed their professional relationship to be prosperous. However, over time, LL Cool J grew concerned about the management of his finances, ultimately reaching the realization that his father was not handling his money responsibly. This realization marked a turning point in their professional dynamic, prompting LL Cool J to reassess his management structure and financial affairs. LL Cool J's autobiography, LL Cool J by Dustin Sheckle, paints a vivid picture of a period of financial mismanagement. LL recounted how his trust 
and those handling his finances led to unexpected trouble. He said that he believed everything was under control, but basic things like taxes weren't even being paid. On top of that, the company credit card was being used for personal expenses. Unaware of the looming financial storm, LL remained carefree, discussing his extravagant spending habits with the Chicago Tribune. He revealed a collection of 12 cars, a truly massive hat collection numbering over 2,000, and enough jewelry to, in his own words, leave him black and blue. Before long, Nunez's mishandling led to LL Cool J owing a staggering $2 million to the IRS. Reflecting on this setback, he candidly remarked to the Chicago Tribune that entrusting his destiny to others wasn't wise. Beyond the financial repercussions, LL sensed his father's neglect of his burgeoning film career, suspecting that Nunez withheld scripts from him. Consequently, LL made the difficult decision to terminate his father as his manager. However, he acknowledged that this experience profoundly influenced his approach to future business dealings. LL Cool J's relationship with his father, James Nunez, was complex and marked by both hardship and a later attempt at reconciliation. Despite this setback, LL described his new meticulous approach to managing his career, saying in LL Cool J that he is aware of every role, every offer, every deal, and every dime that comes in through his camp. He declared that he became involved with every decision. In a more positive turn, father and son appear to have rebuilt some of their connection before James Nunez's passing in 2012. LL's message on social media at the time reflected a complex mix of emotions, acknowledging both the hurt of the past and the love that remained. The scars of his father's betrayal cast a long shadow on LL Cool J. This early experience made him wary of those closest to him, leading him to take a more hands-on approach to his career and personal life. This extended to his friend and co-manager, Brian Latour. It seems the wounds of his father's mismanagement of LL's affairs made him less trusting and constantly vigilant in protecting his interests. According to his autobiography, LL Cool J, a rift grew between LL and his longtime friend and co-manager, Brian Latour. While tensions simmered due to Latour's focus on managing rapper Nas, a more personal incident shattered their trust. LL upon learning of their mutual friend and manager Cornell Clark's battle with AIDS, instructed Latour to give Clark financial aid to ease his suffering. The discovery that Latour never followed through on this request, revealed in the book, proved to be the breaking point. This betrayal, on top of the existing strain, irrevocably damaged their relationship and ultimately led to their professional split. In the book, LL recounted how he had suffered a profound betrayal by his closest confidant. A godfather to his son and his own manager had deceived him. He stated that the depth of his disgust then and now was beyond expression. LL eventually severed ties with Latcher and took decisive action, reportedly visiting the bank to safeguard his finances against further exploitation by his father. While this incident may have marked the end of being exploited by his inner circle, it didn't signal the end of career challenges for LL Cool J. In the ever-evolving world of hip-hop, a tightrope walk exists for artists and industry folks. They strive to craft music that resonates with a broad audience, bringing hip-hop's infectious energy and storytelling to the forefront. But they also feel a pull to stay grounded in the genre's authentic roots, those raw beats and unfiltered rhymes that emerge from urban communities. Striking this balance is an ongoing challenge. Some attempts, like Vanilla Ice's foray into pop territory, have been met with criticism for diluting the genre's core elements. Yet, when successful, this tightrope walk can expand hip-hop's influence and introduce its captivating elements to a wider world. LL Cool J's artistic direction in the late 1980s landed him in the precarious position of many hip-hop artists, balancing mainstream appeal with staying true to the genre's core identity. His 1989 album, Walking with a Panther, sparked controversy, with some fans on My Black History feeling it strayed too far from his Queensbridge roots. This critical reception was brutally amplified at a live Apollo performance, according to Pop Matters, where a once-adoring crowd booed him. This incident proved to be a crossroads in LL Cool J's career, highlighting the tightrope walk that many hip-hop artists navigate in their pursuit of both artistic expression and commercial success. LL Cool J learned a valuable lesson from the Walking with a Panther reception. His next album, Mama Said Knock You Out, was a forceful response. Gritty beats, tougher rhymes, it was a triumphant return to the Queensbridge sound that first propelled him to fame. Critics raved, proving LL hadn't lost his touch. He even playfully acknowledged the controversy with the opening line, Don't call it a comeback, I've been here for years. Mama Said Knock You Out wasn't just a return to form, it was a statement. It solidified LL Cool J's position as a hip-hop icon who could navigate mainstream appeal without sacrificing his artistic core. Tragic Occurrences in Health and Wellness the early 1990s saw LL Cool J at a crossroads. While his music career boomed, with critically acclaimed albums like Mama Said Knock You Out, solidifying his hip-hop royalty status, his personal life remained a tangled mess. 
Struggling with the pressures of fame, LL reportedly admitted to a period of chasing fleeting relationships, a self-described sex junkie phase. Yet, amidst this turmoil, Simone, his on-again, off-again girlfriend since his teenage years, they already shared a child, born when LL was just 19, and their complex bond would continue to shape his life, both on and off the stage. Then, according to LL, a bizarre turning point arrived. He claimed to have a vivid dream visitation from Satan, a wake-up call that jolted him to confront his self-destructive path and recommit to Simone. This unorthodox intervention, real or symbolic, paved the way for their eventual marriage in 1995. In this bizarre turn of events, LL recounted a vivid dream visitation from none other than Satan. LL revealed to the Chicago Tribune that Satan came to him, wanting him to sell his soul. He went further to say he couldn't see him, but Satan held him down and told him he could be whatever he wanted to be, but he had to say yes. LL said he refused. This encounter, real or metaphorical, became a turning point. Following that, his life spiraled downward with everything seemingly crumbling around him. However, a glimmer of hope emerged, gradually illuminating his path once more. Maintaining unwavering faith and trusting in the divine, LL sought solace in the scriptures, even sleeping with the Bible by his side. Eventually, the tide turned and blessings began to manifest. In a triumphant turn of events, his 2000 album, Goat, ascended to the coveted number one position on Billboard's charts, signaling a resurgence and reaffirming the power of perseverance and faith. LL Cool J's nine-year marriage to his wife took a dramatic turn in 2004, when his wife, Simone Smith, was diagnosed with chondrosarcoma, a rare and aggressive bone cancer. Facing this challenge together, their 1995 marriage took on a new depth. Simone underwent a grueling 15-hour surgery, with LL by her side every step of the way. Simone, in an interview with ET, opened up about the emotional challenges of her grueling two-and-a-half-year recovery journey. During this time, she had to rebuild her strength and mobility from the ground up, relearning how to walk again. She described a particularly difficult aspect of this process, which was the pressure to maintain a constantly positive attitude. Her recovery journey wasn't easy. It stretched over two and a half years, demanding immense perseverance. She described the gradual steps she took towards regaining mobility, progressing from a wheelchair to using two crutches, then one crutch, and finally a cane. LL Cool J's wife, Simone Smith, managed to turn this medical challenge into a symbol of love and support. A skin grab on her foot, unfortunately, altered a cherished childhood tattoo of a lollipop. Instead of letting this bring her down, Simone channeled her creativity. She launched her jewelry line, Simone I. Smith, and within it, designed a beautiful lollipop necklace. This sweet reminder of childhood became a powerful symbol she shares with LL Cool J, both wearing the necklace close to their hearts. Their story doesn't end there. True to their philanthropic nature, a portion of the proceeds goes to the American Cancer Society, a cause particularly meaningful to them. A dose of bad luck struck LL Cool J's 2022 New Year's Eve plans. The rap legend was primed to energize the crowd at Dick Clark's New Year's Rockin' Eve with Ryan Seacrest 2022 with a medley of his iconic hits. Unfortunately, a positive COVID-19 test just before the event threw a wrench into those plans. Disappointed fans missed seeing LL Cool J rock at Times Square, and the performer himself expressed regret about having to cancel his highly anticipated hometown celebration. Despite the setback, LL Cool J's spirit remained high. He shared that he was ready, and he was really looking forward to rocking out in his hometown in a special way. Sending well wishes to everyone, he concluded by wishing everyone a healthy and happy new year, exclaiming that the best is yet to come. Instead of the usual throngs of 58,000 revelers, a mere 15,000 would be allowed into the normally jam-packed streets. The rising case numbers also impacted the performer lineup, with singer Chloe forced to cancel her appearance in the Big Apple. Adding to the sense of disappointment, LL Cool J's positive test result came just days before his 54th birthday, a double dose of bad luck that threatened to dampen the celebratory spirit. But despite all these numerous challenges and setbacks, LL Cool J has had an amazing career. LL Cool J's career, I've been rhyming since I was nine years old, you know, and when I was 11, my grandfather bought me a whole lot of equipment, a whole lot of musical equipment, about $2,000 worth. So what I did was, you know, I evolved slowly. It was like a process, evolution. Hip hop's rhythm pulsed through LL Cool J's veins from a young age. By 10, he was already crafting rhymes, inspired by the legendary Treacherous Three. Fast forward a few years, and the 16-year-old was a musical force in his grandparents' home. A jazz saxophonist himself, his grandfather recognized the spark in his grandson and gifted him $2,000 worth of DJ equipment. This act of support wasn't the only one. After a period of estrangement, LL Cool J reconciled with his father, who became 
became a guiding light at the cusp of his musical career. His mother, ever supportive, even used her tax refund to buy him a coveted cork drum machine. Music wasn't just a hobby, it was his native language, the way kids in his Queens neighborhood spoke. As fate would have it, this was the same time Rick Rubin and Russell Simmons were laying the groundwork for Def Jam, the label that would soon become synonymous with hip-hop. Armed with his grandfather's mixer and overflowing with talent, LL Cool J started mixing his own demos, sending them out to record companies across New York City, including the fledgling Def Jam. The rest, as they say, is hip-hop history. LL Cool J's signing with Def Jam in 1984 marked the official launch of his music career. His debut single, I Need a Beat, wasn't just any record. It was a hard-hitting, streetwise anthem for b-boys, showcasing his raw talent with spare beats and ballistic rhymes. LL had sent demos to numerous labels, but Def Jam felt like home. He declared that this was what he wanted to do after his electrifying debut performance at Manhattan Center High School, where screams and autograph requests from girls solidified his passion. I Need a Beat exploded, selling over 100,000 copies and becoming a commercial force. This, along with the Beastie Boys' Rock Hard, propelled Def Jam to secure a crucial distribution deal with Columbia Records in 1985. LL Cool J's debut wasn't just a personal triumph. It was a turning point for Def Jam and the sound of hip-hop itself. LL Cool J's creative fire continued to burn brightly throughout the 40 years of his career. In 2012, he unleashed the single Ratchet, a potent taste of his upcoming album, Authentic Hip Hop. Collaborations with Joe and Trackmasters on Take It Further stoked anticipation. The album title eventually shifted to simply Authentic, with a new release date and a surprising twist. Guest spots by legendary Van Halen guitarist Eddie Van Halen. Recognition followed suit. In 2013, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nominated LL for induction, solidifying his status as a hip-hop pioneer. He then planned Goat 2, an album aimed at showcasing rising talent alongside his own lyrical prowess. While ultimately shelved for not meeting his own high standards, the project reflects his dedication to nurturing the next generation. LL's influence extends beyond music. He hosted the Grammy Awards for an impressive five years, showcasing his charisma and versatility. A 2016 Hollywood Walk of Fame star and a 2018 Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nomination cemented his place in pop culture history. Never one to rest, LL re signed with Def Jam in 2019, with a Q-tip produced album on the horizon. Even the 2021 COVID setback couldn't stop him as he bounced back to host the 2022 iHeartRadio Music Awards. LL Cool J remains a force to be reckoned with, a true hip-hop icon. LL Cool J has also had an illustrious acting career that rivals his musical success. LL Cool J's acting career wasn't just an afterthought to his musical success. It showcased his versatility as an entertainer. While a cameo in Crush Groove, performing his hit, I Can't Live Without My Radio, hinted at his potential. His official acting debut came in the high school football flick Wildcats. But it was Barry Levinson's 1992 film Toys, where he landed his first substantial role, playing Captain Patrick Zevo. This wasn't just about dramatic chops, though. LL Cool J brought his charisma and comedic timing to the forefront in his sitcom, In the House, which ran from 1995 to 1999. The show cast him as a former Oakland Raiders running back facing financial woes and forced to rent out part of his house, a relatable and hilarious premise that resonated with audiences for five seasons. LL Cool J proved he could seamlessly transition between rapping and acting, captivating fans on both sides of the camera. LL Cool J's acting career reached new heights in 2009 when he landed his most iconic on-screen role, the role of NCIS Special Agent Sam Hanna on the hit CBS series NCIS Los Angeles. This wasn't just any cop drama, it was a chance to showcase his action hero persona. Sam Hanna, a former Navy SEAL with fluency in Arabic and expertise in West Asian culture, was a perfect fit for LL's charisma and commanding presence. The show, a spin-off of the already established NCIS universe, debuted in the fall of 2009, but fans met Sam Hanna a few months earlier in a crossover episode. For 14 seasons, LL brought Sam Hanna to life, earning a Teen Choice Award for his work. Even after the NCIS Los Angeles finale in in May 2023, LL's journey with the character wasn't over. He's set to reprise the role as a recurring guest star in the third season of NCIS Hawaii, proving that Sam Hanna's story and LL Cool J's acting prowess continue to captivate audiences. What do you think of all the challenges LL Cool J had to overcome? Let us know in the comments section. And to continue watching videos with engaging content, click on one of the cards appearing on your screen now.